What's up, YouTube? It is your boy, JB, and we are here for the season finale of Ready to Love. This is season four, episode 13. The episode was titled, I Choose You. So you guys, before we get into this episode, if you guys are watching this video or any other video on the channel and you're not already subscribed to the channel, then what are we doing, you guys? Why are we continuing to go out and you not pay for the date? So with that being said, hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell button, and share this video, you guys. Now, without further ado, let's go ahead and get into this episode review, shall we? All right, you guys. So you guys remember in the last episode, Tommy told the, the group that he wants them to go and meet each other's families, right? So the first person that's going to be introducing someone to their family is going to be Vernicia. So Vernicia is going to be introducing Joelle to her mother, her stepfather, and her oldest daughter, right? So, um... Honestly, when it came to Joelle talking to her mama and her stepfather and her daughter, to me, it just really felt like Joelle was running a little bit of game. That's just my personal opinion. You guys can let me know what you think, but it just felt to me as if he was running game. Um, so her mama, when he sat down, she lit right into Joelle, and I loved that. But like I said, for me, it just felt like Joelle was running a bit of game so they did have questions about you know um you know her kids his kids and from how he talked about it you know he's open to you know um if it comes down to it being a blended family with vernice and her three daughters and him and his two kids and the same with her family they said you know they'll wait they'll welcome his two kids with open arms but like i said for me it just really felt as if Joel was running game you guys again like I said let me know so then we see Liz so Liz she's having um, baby teeth meet her family right so it's her brother-in-law it's her, and her it's her two sisters and her brother-in-law right so when baby teeth comes in baby teeth you know now look, looking back at it once again after watching the episode and taking my notes Baby Teeth, I feel like Baby Teeth was running game as well when he came in. So Baby Teeth, when he came in, he did, you know, speak to her brother-in-law. He spoke to her sisters. But then when he sat down at the table, Baby Teeth immediately wanted to pray over the food. I'm like, we have watched this epic, we have watched this show for the last 13 weeks, and I have not once saw you mention any time, at any time when y'all sat down for any dinner, to pray over the food. Like, I'm like, you just playing with, I'm like, you really putting it on thick for this family. Like, cause not once have you made any inclination to pray over the food. Like, really, these people are playing. So then they asked him um, a question about his favorite scripture and he gave a scripture. I was surprised that he even knew a scripture. Just being honest with you guys. So then, you know, um, I think one of her sisters asked, is he securing Liz? He said, yes, he is securing Liz because Liz showed him everything that he needed to see, which I will say one thing with Baby Teeth, he has been consistent with that one. I'll definitely give him that. He's definitely, if, he, if, if nothing else, he's been consistent. So I definitely give Baby Teeth that one. So let's move on, you guys. All right, you guys. So next, let's move over to Amber. So Amber is meeting up with Chris and his two brothers. So I was so confused, like, why are y'all meeting at the bar? Like, I see um, y'all at a pool table. Why are y'all meeting her at a bar? Y'all didn't have a more formal setting to go to to meet her. But you know what? Let me not complain. Let me just shut my mouth. Like, shut my mouth and call me Sue, right? So one of his brothers asked Amber, basically, in a nutshell, why hasn't anybody scooped her up? And she says, well, maybe the question, she says, the question could be, why haven't I allowed anybody to scoop me up? And then he was like, well, do you have any, or could it be that you have some character flaws? And I was like, well, damn, that's a little bit rude. That's rude. So then the other one asked the question of, is this real? And I was like, is this real? I'm gonna be honest with you guys. I don't think any of these situations are real. I think that there might be, I think that there, I think some people might be genuine to the process 
And honestly, at this point, the only person that I can tell you guys that I feel is 100% genuine to this process is gonna be Liz. Liz is the only person that gives me that she's genuine about this process. No one else does. But the reason that um, the brother asked Amber was the situation real, real with she and Chris is because of what happened with him last season. Now you guys know, I don't know what happened last season with Chris and Naya. You guys have done a good job of letting me know what happened with Chris and Naya, but I don't know. I haven't gone back and watched last season for myself. But Amber says, you know, yes, it's very real for her. And she says that, you know, outside of the show and everything, she and Chris, they managed to form a connection with each other because they would talk to each other on the phone and they would text each other on, you know, text each other. And they say, you know, she said that, Naya said that same thing as well last season. And Amber's like, well, you know, with me, you just got to take what I, you know, you just got to take it for face value with me. And I respect that. So then we move over to Kyra and AJ, right? So Kyra, she has AJ meeting her mom and her friend, who's a lawyer as well. So AJ comes in and her mom and her friend, they sit down and immediately they start asking AJ some questions. So, um, let's see, where are we at? So her friend asks, what, he, what does AJ think that Kyra wants? And AJ says, well, they have similar interest. I don't know what that meant, that you guys have similar interest. She's asking you, what do you think Kyra wants? You technically didn't answer the question, if we're being honest. So then she asked him, is he fun? I mean, I, he, I, don't, I don't really know what, answer, what questions he actually answered. So then her mom asked him the question of how is he with conflict? He says, you know, he's someone who will listen to what, his other, what the other person has to say. And if you do say something that hurts him or offends him, he'll let you get everything out. And then after that, he'll say how he feels. So then she also asked him, you know, how is his relationship with his mom? And he says it's, he has a great relationship with his mom. Um, let's see where we at. So then her mom also asked him, what is the next steps between he and Kyra? So AJ says that he's not particularly sure what the next steps are with he and Kyra. Now I want you guys to keep that in mind and we're gonna mention that again toward the end of the episode. But let's move on, you guys. All right, you guys, next up, let's talk about Amber. So Amber has Chris meeting up with her brother and her sister and her friend, right? So I think it was Amber's brother who asked Chris, how many serious relationships has he been in? He says four. And they were taking a little bit of back by him saying four. And I was like, really? He's, a, I mean, what, Chris is in his 40s and he said he's had four serious relationships in his lifetime? That's not bad. That's not bad. I mean, if you ask him how many, how many times has he been married, he said four times and that would be something for you to gasp at, but four serious relationships. He didn't give a timeline of when those relationships occurred. And like I said, Chris is in his 40s, so I don't understand why they felt so shocked and, you know, shocked and, you know, dismayed by that. But okay, I didn't think anything of it. He said four serious relationships. Like, He's what I think Chris is like, what, 41 or something like that? I know he's in his 40s. That could be every decade from when he was 10, I, I, you know, just, just being funny. But that doesn't mean anything. So I was thoroughly interested. That I was confused when they were shy about that. So then, you know, they're talking about the fact that, you know, Amber, she works. So they asked the question of how will he bring Amber back to self-care in order to make sure that she doesn't overwork herself. And Chris says that, you know, in order to make sure that she doesn't overwork herself, he, 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 won't, he won't allow her to work herself into a bad mental space. And I was like, they like that answer, but I didn't. And I'm gonna tell you guys why I did not like that answer. Because he said he would not allow that. I'm like, you can't tell her what she can and not, cannot do. I mean, like I said, they like that answer. And it's interesting. You like the answer about he won't allow her to do this, but you were kind of in your, you kind of felt some type of way about him having four serious relationships. 
I'm cool with him having a four serious relationships and not cool with him saying he wouldn't allow her to do that. Like, she's her own person. She can make her own decisions. What you could have said is, you know, to bring her back to self-care, I would, you know, I would, um, I would suggest to her, hey, you got some, you got some time off of work. Okay, I got time off of work. How about we take a little bit of a little vaca- a mini vacation or a big vacation, whichever one, and it just be me and you. You leave your work computer, you leave everything behind, and it's just me and you, babe. I would have liked that answer, a answer similar to that, then I wouldn't allow her to, but whatever. So then we see Joel. So Joel has Vernicia meet up with his sister and his niece, BB and um Butter. So they so they tell Vernicia, hey, tell us about you. So Vernicia tells them that she has three kids, and then they say, well, you know, with him having his two kids, are you open to raising two other kids? And she was like, oh, yeah, you know, you know, some, I've been in situations where, I've, you know, I've raised other kids outside of my own, and, you know, I'm, I've, I've been done with the dad, but I'm still, you know, I'm still there for the kids. So now here's something that confused me with the sister and the niece. Because they feel that Bernicia likes him too much. Is that a bad thing to like someone a lot? <sighs> like, very interesting. Is it a bad thing to like someone too much? I, I don't understand. I don't understand. But whatever. Let's move on. All right, you guys. So next, let's talk about baby teeth once again. So baby teeth and his mom. They're meeting with Liz, right? Liz is a, I mean, Liz is a very, very good looking woman. She is drop dead gorgeous. So Jason's mom, Baby T's mom asked, you know, Liz about money. And I was like, money? Excuse you, lady? Cause when she said, when she said, let's talk about money. I'm like, are you asking me about a gold digger? Like, what are you asking me about money? But Liz says, you know, she, she's, she's been on the other end. You know, she's, she's gone from, you know, having money to, struggling so she knows a good balance between the both of them I'm like, I'm like Liz is better than me because I would have went off on her I'm just gonna keep her real with you you asking me about money why are you asking me about money like I hate like I don't know I'm getting to know you for the first time and that's your first question money but okay so then his mom asked um, Liz you know does she think she can lead without him knowing he's being led. And Liz says, you know, well, I haven't been in a, I've never been married. And we also know she hasn't been in a relationship in quite some time. But she says that, you know, she feels that God will, if if she and Jason, you know, make it together, she feels that God will, you know, show her the way. Cool. So then we see AJ. So AJ, he has um, Kyra meeting his mom, right? Now he says that he and his mom can butt heads. And we all know that him and Kyra can kind of butt heads with each other as well. So what he doesn't want is a situation where he's dating his mom. So his mom asked, you know, um, asked Kyra, what is it that you think that he likes so much about you? Now, I will say I never heard Kyra answer that question. Now, AJ's mom, she has some que- she has some bit of reservations about AJ in particular. You know, she's talking about the fact that AJ taught himself how to play the piano. But she wonders with this, because she says, you know, this is something that AJ typically does, that he gets into situations where he really engages himself in them, but at a certain point, he disengages from the situation. So she's wondering if with Kyra, it's like another project where he's engaging in, in the situation with Kyra, only to later on down the line, disengage from Kyra. I can tell you what that is, mama. You're right, 100%. I feel that, and it's like I've been saying this whole season, it's like I've been saying about you know people this season. I do feel that, like I said, I do feel that there were certain people on this show who were looking for love, but for the most part, I feel like most people on this show were there for a check, some a little bit of fame, like that's just my personal opinions. You guys can always let me know what you guys think in the comment section below, and we can definitely discuss it. 
So then Kyra tells his mom that, you know, they've had a, some ups and downs. And she's like, so what does that mean? She says, well, you know, AJ and I met each other prior to the, we went out prior to this show and it didn't go that well because I paid for the date. And AJ's mom was like, oh, no, 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 no. Like that, that wouldn't fly with me. Like if you pay for the date, if I have to pay for the date, it's a wrap. I'm like, oh, okay, so your mama didn't raise you like that, huh? Your mama raised you better than that. I like his mama. I liked his mama. All right, you guys, so now we we just going to go ahead and just wrap the episode up and talk about who picked who, who didn't pick who. It's really easy to figure out who picked who and who didn't pick who. So I will say that I was two for three, two for two. I was two for, I was two. I got two couples right that picked each other, that made it to the finale and picked each other. Joel and Bernicia picked each other and Amber and Chris picked each other. Now, I was wrong about the other couples. I never, I didn't expect for Liz and Baby Teeth to make it to the end and I damn sure didn't expect for Kyra and AJ to make it to the end together. So AJ, he was playing the piano for um, Kyra. She liked that. She didn't choose him. She asked him, what was the name of that song? He said, I choose you. I'm like, nah, cool. <laughs> That's crap, but whatever. So he chose her, she didn't choose him, but Baby Teeth and Liz chose each other. And I was just, like I said, you guys, I was just looking at Liz and I'm like, wow, Liz is such a gorgeous woman. We gonna leave it at that. But that's it, you guys. Next week is the reunion of Ready to Love. So um, leave your comments in the comment section below, like the video, subscribe to the channel. Hit the notification bell button so you guys are aware when I drop anything else. Share the video and into the next one. Stay safe. Take care of yourselves. Wash your hands. Wear your mask or not. Stay safe. Be blessed. And we'll get through this together and socially distance you guys. All right, guys. That's it. I'm off of here and I hope you guys have a great weekend. And I'll see you guys again on Sunday for our shows, The Shy, Baddies ATL, and for um, Married to Medicine Reunion Part 1 of 3. All right, guys. That's it. Bye, guys.